Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I've asked if the lights could be lifted for this session, and David Glover agreed. And the reason, thank you very much, is I like to see the whites of your eyes. <laughs> and I like to see you as my class. I hope you've all made the connection that music is an incredibly important part of what has been happening today. We started with the didgeribone, an improvisation on this extraordinary instrument. We then saw a film that had been put together showing how TEDx was set up, and music actually made that film work. Without music, that film would have been a very different film. We then saw the rabbit that had music, a tragic end for the rabbit, but nonetheless music. And then we have had Synergy, whose piece, their percussion piece, was an improvised piece. I spoke to Brie afterwards and I said, that's clearly improvised. And she said, yes, we work on a particular pattern. We take that pattern and every time we perform that piece, we do it differently. And then we had a string quartet which included amplified sounds with improvisation. Structures on which other structures had been imposed. This is the creative process. This is the process which starts with an idea which comes from the imagination, the musical imagination. And when the musical imagination is ignited in a group circumstance, we have the most extraordinary power to change lives with music and to involve people in music. And it should start with very, very, very young children. Not teenagers, not that it's, not that it's you can't start. I've taught teenagers who have had their first experience with music as teenagers. But my view is that all of that improvisation all of that creativity you saw on the stage today is the right of every child, no matter where and no matter what the circumstance. Every child, I believe, should have access to properly taught music in the hands of a properly taught teacher. That, and it can start in the simplest way. Music is an oral art. And when I talk about music, I define it as sound organized in some way passing through time. With children, we begin with imitation, the most powerful way of teaching. And if you don't mind becoming three-year-olds just for a minute, I promise you, a minute, I'll make my point. I'm going to clap a pattern. I want you to clap it back. You're clearly not three, but <clears throat> here's another one. What you'll notice is you accelerate, you get louder, and you don't actually do the pattern properly. Now, <laughs> which means you are educable. You can be taught. When you do that with children, what you are doing is you're engaging them in their first oral experience. They need to listen, and as a result of the listening, they repeat, and it requires focus. When this happens, and we take a very simple nursery rhyme, and we say, with children, we go, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. We do this little pattern. I frequently say to the children, very young children, who can do a different pattern? Child one puts hand up and goes, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. I say, thank you very much. Who can do a different pattern? Humpty Dumpty sat. And then the next child will say, when will this be over? <laughs> All teaching is an act of faith. And with children, the idea that repetition and putting them in the circumstance of offering ideas is vital. Music is important for the following reasons. It is abstract. 
it doesn't mean anything outside itself. But when we play a sound, you can interpret that sound as you wish. I'm going to go to the TEDx Steinway. <laughs> and it is a Steinway. David uh, Glover sampled his Steinway. I'm going to play some sounds. Those sounds are abstract. They mean nothing other than themselves. If I then say, I'm going to play a composition, and it's called something. I want you to imagine what this composition might be called. Does anyone have an idea of what that composition might be called? Probably highly forgettable. But <laughs> in each person, that sort of music, any music, will evoke a different response. Music does not describe. Music does not narrate. Music does not tell stories. Music evokes. Music suggests. Music implies. And music opens up the mind of a child in an extraordinary way. And I want to give you some ideas on that, back to the Steinway. These three pieces deal with night. Claire de Lune of the WC. A little night nice music of Mozart. The Moonlight Sonata of Beethoven. They have nothing to do with night whatsoever. <laughs> the title is simply a way in. But this abstraction about music is what offers a child the chance to move into a really special world of thinking. And we get children, therefore, to try to understand that the most important thing about music is to make your own music. Children must make their own music. It is not that they shouldn't reproduce music, but they must make their own. And they make it best through singing. That every child, given normal circumstances, has the capacity to sing. You all have the capacity to sing. Shall we test that? <laughs> yes, we shall. <laughs> I'll give you a little phrase, and I'd like you to sing it back. La 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 Pitch better than rhythm for you lot. Very good. Now what about if I give you a little pattern here like foot, hand, foot, hand. Just try that foot, hand, and then sing this back. La 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 la. Now sing the whole thing from the beginning. Go. <laughs> exactly. When in doubt, improvise. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Through singing is how we engage every child. Through singing is how we teach children to be literate, to read and write. Through singing is how we teach children to analyze. I was working with a group of first grade girls, and we were doing a song about patty cake, patty cake. And I had the pitch on the board. Not they could read the pitch, but I believe they should confront the example. And throughout the lesson, we do numbers of activities. And at one stage, I said to them, let's look at the song on the board. What do you notice? And they said, one put a hand up and said, it goes up. And I said, it goes down. This little bright button at the end of the line said, well, there are crotchets <clears throat> and minims in that song. <laughs> and everyone else in the class went, oh, oh. <laughs> So at the end of the lesson, 
I'd like to make a summary. What have we done? It's very important for me to find out what we have done. So all sitting on the floor, I'm sitting there with it, and I said, what did we do today? Nothing. <laughs> That's a very common response, nothing. We just jumped, or we clapped, and we sang. And they went through, I finally got out what they did, and this one put a hand up and said, well, we learned about crotchets and minims, but I had to teach it. <laughs> what was interesting was watching the other, the kids go, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so the next day, another song is on the board. And all these lessons have been video, they've been taped. Another song on the board, we're observing the notation. And the end of the lesson, I bring them all together. And I said, now, what do you notice about the notation today, the pattern? It goes up, it goes down, it does this. And she was sitting right there, and she looked up at me, and she said, they haven't got a clue. <laughs> Which was tolerated by the rest of the class, <laughs> that concept. They probably agreed. With music, you open up the mind of a child in a very special way, different from drama, different from dance, different from visual arts. There was a movement which said all the arts work the same way. When we, had, we went through the touchy-feely 60s, that is simply not true. The arts function in different ways, and music, in my view, is at the top of the food chain. The drama people tend not to agree with me on that. But I also put dance in there. But what I want to say is that the power of the creative thought transferred from music to all other areas of learning is hugely potent. The evidence, the, neuro the neurological evidence for music is in, in a spectacular way. That's a bonus. Music is worth teaching for its own sake. It is worth teaching because it is good. It is worth teaching because it is unique. And it is worth teaching because it empowers children spectacularly. And when you get a fifth grade boy who comes up with a piece of music and says, look, I made this myself, with that sort of threat, <laughs> you know it's working. Thank you.